Ladies and gentlemen, today is mowing day. today I'm gonna be using the X4 on some lawns and I'm gonna use the X2 on some lawns and then I will be uh, showing you guys I got some other footage too but I wanted to do like an actual action side to side um, of each camera just to see what they look like the stabilization and all that stuff so um, you guys already know that the other camera X2 maxes out at 5.7 K 30 this one maxes out at 8 K 30 um, and so that's what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna run max specs on them um, nothing special and then we'll kind of dive into it later but um, yeah so I just want to do like a quick side by side of each camera so today's mowing day <laughs> we're at the next place um <laughs> we're gonna be doing uh 5.7k 30 on this uh, the x2 uh, because that's what we're maxed out at and uh so yeah so let's get this let's get this show on the road all right Gracious, you ever have something just stuck in your foot? Ah, and you can't see it because it's too freaking small. Gosh, I felt I thought it came out because I thought it was poking me different. Can't get it out. The show must go on. Alright guys, here's some side by side. This is the X2, it's got like this little slip cover. And then this is the X4, it's got like this nicer zip case, which is really nice. And it also comes with like a microfiber cloth in there that you can zip up in there. And I really like that because I'm really bad at losing that type of stuff. Let's lower this down a little bit. Alright, first, yeah, man, this is like all blown out, isn't it? Sorry guys, okay. So first, the X2. If I can do this one handed, all right. And I've, sh I've I've shot some other content on the X2 and done some close-up stuff of it. So I'll put some other videos and link in the description so you guys can check those out. But this is basically the X2, pretty basic, really clean look to it. It's got the little screen, got this little textile grip all around it, around the edges. But pretty straightforward. Got the record stop start button right there power button over here goes right back in the zip in the, in the slip case which is also nice about the slip case I really like this because it kind of glides like it's really almost like a microfiber-y type of material so it doesn't scratch the lens so every time you take it in and out it actually kind of like wipes your lens off which is really nice 
Then we got the X4. All right, got the microfiber cloth and then the actual camera. So you can see a lot different. It's got, you got the, the lens guard there and then you have this big old screen, cutting a couple buttons at the bottom. You got the stop starter button right there and then some like a button where you can switch through, switch through modes and then you have a button right over here where you can kind of map out some custom settings to where you can just do some like quick settings, do some custom settings and then quickly switch over to those. You got the power button right there. And then basically the exact same thing. You got kind of like a textile grip around the edge, but on the back, if you can see that or not, you got like this diagonal, grippy, really aggressive, uh, I don't even know what you call that grip on the back, which is really, really nice. And overall, the camera just looks nicer. Um, bigger, beefier, more aggressive. If I were to put them side by side, front of the cameras side by side, back of the camera side by side. All right guys, so let's talk about these two cameras. So first, the X2, the older of the two cameras, uh, we've got the X3 now and then the X4 that we're doing today. But the, yeah, the X2 shoots 5.7K. Um, it's got a whole bunch of other features. Um, it's got this tiny little screen on the front, the little circular screen. Two lenses for your 360. And that's basically it. You can use a little screen as a touch screen. It's got the battery that pops out. It's got the side port charger, all the microphones, all the stuff. So pretty basic stuff. Comes with this little slip case. And one of the things that's nice about this camera is that it's, it is uh, thinner, it's lighter. So it's not gonna be weighing you down all the time. When I was shooting some of the other footage that I was shooting, I noticed how much heavier the X4 is compared to the X2. So that is probably the main thing that is like a, a big positive if you're comparing the two cameras. Obviously the X4 is gonna be like a huge giant, oh gosh, a fly. Obviously the X4 is like a huge upgrade from the X2. Yeah, the X2 is heavier. It's got, a, you know, it's got the big screen, it's got a larger battery. So when you have that thing on the selfie stick at length and you're carrying it out like this all the time, it gets pretty heavy pretty quick and I noticed after using that and then immediately using this when I was comparing footage and comparing the, the cameras or whatever, this was a lot lighter. Um, the actual physical appearance of the camera looks really nice. It's got this grippy little section on the outside um, and it just like, kind of looks cool. It's like really, if you're like Insta360, it's kind of nostalgic because this is, you know, like the original look of their uh, you know, these popular 360 cameras that they have now today. So, and it does all the, the hyperlapse and the time lapse and the uh, shoots tw um, 12 megapixel photos and, it, you know, all the, all the things that you'd want a 360 camera to do, this does, right? Um, and it does it really well. And I've always loved this camera. Now the X4, um, it's got this zip, the zip cover, which is a huge upgrade from this other slip cover and also comes with like this little napkin thing you know microfiber cloth so you can clean off your clean off the lens and clean off your screen because it's got a big screen on it which is probably the most noticeable difference from the x2 to the x4 physical wise is that you got this gigantic screen on here which is really really nice but it also makes it to where uh, the camera is going to be thicker not only because of the screen but also because you have a bigger battery longer battery life all that type of stuff so they have to make it bigger thicker heavier so this camera is quite a quite a bit heavier than the x2 if you were to feel both of them <sighs> Excuse me. Overall, about, I don't want to say the same look, but it's the same form factor, same shape. The X4 is definitely taller, thicker, wider, all, well, maybe not wider, taller, thicker um, than the X2. Well, like I said, that's because of all the other extra stuff that they got to pack in there. Every time they release a new camera and they add new features, uh, they got to make these things thicker, heavier, all that stuff, just because you can only fit so much into a small package. So naturally these things are just gonna get bigger. It's got like the backside of the X4 has got like this, I don't know, this little grippy pattern, diagonal grippy pattern that looks really cool. Really like that, it's got really good feel. Just uh, overall, other than, other than that, you have some extra buttons on the X4. You got this little button at the bottom where you can hit uh, record and then this other button where you can switch between quick modes and uh, quick mode on the side, quick mode button on the side so you can make some like custom settings and then just flip over to your, to your quick custom settings which the X2 doesn't have that button. Um, other than that, you know, it's got two lenses like the other one does. The X4 actually comes with these removable uh, lens guards which is really cool. The thing that I've noticed about these lens guards is that they attract 
lint and dust and a lot more than the actual lens does so I find that like I'm always like taking these stupid things off and wiping them down and then like popping them back on and wiping my fingerprints off so that's a little bit annoying I honestly I don't know how much I'm going to actually use them only because I really I don't know it's, some people might say it's risky but I've used the X2 for years without any any lens guards on them I've never used it in a case where I thought they were going to get damaged so I guess it's nice to have them if I think you know maybe it's going to fall hit the pavement or something like that or hit the cement and I think they might get scratched up then I'll use them but just to have them on all the time I don't they're kind of annoying honestly but they are cool that they're included and I like that and I know a lot of people will like that too um, but yeah that's basically it as far as comparing them physically yes they're the same camera but they look a lot different um, and the X4 I think the main thing is besides the X4 just looking more aggressive and cool it's just a lot heavier for sure that's probably the only drawback to this camera um, is the fact that it's so heavy. Other than that, you know, when you pick the camera up, it's like, oh, it's not that heavy. If you compare it to the X2, it's like a lot heavier. And by the time you get it at arm's length with that selfie stick and you're carrying it like this for an hour plus, it's, it gets heavy pretty quick. So, like I said, that's the only drawback to the X4 because the X4 is packed with features and the resolution and all this stuff. Obviously, when you jump from, like two full generations of camera, the X4 is going to be a big upgrade from the X2. If you already have an X2, or if you have the opportunity to maybe buy one used or something, the X2 is a great camera and you, you probably get it at a really, really good price right now. So if you don't really want to spring for like the higher end camera right now, the X2 is a really good buy. Maybe you can find it on Facebook, eBay or something like that. Or um, I'm not sure if, uh, Insta360, if, the, if they still sell this one. Maybe find it on clearance, open box at Best Buy, something like that. X2 is a solid camera. But just comparing the two, if we hop into the video modes here, Obviously, we have the upgraded lenses with the X4. So your max resolution when 360 mode is going to be your 8K at 30 frames per second on an X4, 5.7K on the X2 at 30 frames per second as well. And that applies to most of the video uh, modes on there. It'll change a little bit depending on the type of uh, frame rate you're going to be using. So say you want to do slow motion. They don't really have like an actual slow motion setting on here. You're going to just flip over to your video and then change your resolution. As you change your resolution, then the number of frames per second that you can shoot in increase. So if you just say like in the X4, if you want to shoot in slow motion, you got to bump it down to like 4K, 100 frames per second. Same thing on the X2. If you want slow motion, it's like 3K at 100 frames per second. But yeah, so those are the those are basically the max resolution that these two can do: 5.7K, 30, 8K, 30. And then from there, it varies a little bit depending on what video setting you want to do or what time lapse you want to do. I know some of the time lapse, hyper lapse stuff on the X4 is actually able to do 11K, which I don't know what instance you would need that for. I mean, if you're punching way, 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 way far in on a time lapse or something and you want to punch in and out and get these really cool zoom effects, then that would be kind of cool. But once you start getting up to like 4K and above, there's not like, I don't think there's, just visually, there's not tons and tons of difference unless you're punching way in. The only thing you're buying when you buy something for more resolution, if you're jumping from 4K to like an 8K, is obviously more pixel density, so you're going to be able to you're going to be able to push in uh, farther. So if you want to crop in on something really quick, or if you want to say you wanted to use it as like a single cam setup and and uh, be able to punch in way in and punch way out and have it look like multiple cameras or something like that, then that's when your max resolution is going to do really well because you can punch in without any distortion. Um, whereas like just regular 1080p, it struggles a little bit because when you punch in, it gets a little grainy and fuzzy and stuff like that. You lose detail. But by the time you get past 4K and you jump up to 8K and then 11K and you look at the footage and you're like, all right, it just, it all looks good, but it all looks the same and until you start punching in. So now I will say, talking about all that, when you, with these cameras, because they are 360 cameras, when they start listing the specs and they're like, oh, this has got 8K at 30 frames per second. This one's got 5.7K at 30 frames per second. Great resolution. That's awesome, right? They're talking about 360 footage. So that's both of the lenses put together for the entire for that one entire video when you're shooting in 360. It's like an accumulative resolution. It's not just a re one resolution when you're looking at one frame. So what'll happen is you'll shoot in 5.7K on your X2, right? And then when you go to export that video, if you don't export that video as a 360 video, like a VR type of video, then it's going to that video automatically is going to jump down to 1080p because each one of these lenses only has so much resolution. 
Now that is a nice upgrade from the X2 to the X4 because since you have 8K 360, that means each one of these lenses individually is 4K, which is awesome because then you can you go single lens mode 4K and it still looks really, really good, have a lot of resolution, have a lot of room to punch in and punch out. And it's, it just looks better, it's a lot more clarity, all this stuff, just more creativity. You just do what you want with a video, you know. Um, that is the nice thing about this. Like I said, 4K single lens mode, really, really awesome. Where single lens mode on this, it maxes out at, I don't think it's like, I don't know, 1440p or something. I'm not really sure what it is, but another big upgrade uh, as far as like usability is gonna be the actual like processors that are inside of these two cameras. So I found that using the X2 over the years, um, there are times where depending on the video load or when you're actually on that phone and trying to edit it for off of the camera. So if you connect your phone to the camera and you're trying to edit a video, then the processor on this kind of slows you down a little bit because it's not as quick. So you can get some choppy footage. It'll get a little laggy sometimes. Uh, whereas the 8K, I mean, I say well, the 8K, whereas the X4, um, the processor is a lot quicker, is a lot better. You know, they've advanced it over two generations. So I haven't had any issues with lag or jitters at all when I'm um, editing video off of this on my phone, uh, which is really good because it just makes the user experience that much better. But other than that, just the actual editing experience uh, compared to the X2, the X4 is the exact same. Um, if you've ever edited any Insta360 footage with their app or the desktop app, it's the exact same process. Nothing's changed. You just get uh, better usability. Most of the upgrades, you know, is, is really just, is, it's a big hardware upgrade on the camera. Um, so just your user experience as a consumer is going to be a lot nicer with the X4 compared to the X2. Um, when it comes down to, you know, the usability, the larger screen, the large screen on here is really, really good. I will say the, the little screen, the little circle screen on here that, you know, this thing's like a half inch big or whatever, this, or like an inch big, and it's touch screen enabled, but it has similar, I don't know, it can, it's just, it's so small, it's just really hard to use. So you'll press things on accident and you'll try to swipe over to, to review a clip and you can't really review it because it's clicking something else and you try to look around on the little circle. It's just, it's not very fun. And it makes it feel like anytime you use the camera, you gotta have it tethered to your phone, which I really don't like that. The X4 is nice because you have this big old screen. So anytime you turn it on, it's like a little mini smartphone and you can just flip through your stuff. You can get a really good uh, view of what the camera is actually seeing. It doesn't feel like you have to have it tethered to your phone to actually get a good feel of, a, oh, okay, these are my settings, this is what it's going to look like, and get a solid preview of it. So I really like that about the X4 as well. And obviously, the guys, X2 to the X4, we're talking, you know, two years of development and upgrading. Um, so obviously, the X4 is going to be bit, is going to be better in every single way. So this, the point of this video isn't to say which one's better. It's really just comparing the two. It's really just comparing the two cameras, and for anybody who may be diving into the 360 space, or if you have an X2, should you upgrade to the X4? And I would say yes, you definitely should up upgrade to the X4. I waited quite a while to upgrade. Um, I have, I obviously, I've got the X2. I've had it for a while, and then my brother-in-law. He had the X3 for a minute and he let me test it and that's why I actually shot a video X2 that versus X3 and the actual at the 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 end result that you got with the X3 it to me it wasn't worth the upgrade it wasn't worth me trying to sell this camera and buying the X3 because at the end of the day the footage legit looked the exact same um, yeah, you got a bigger screen and some of the other cooler features to make your user experience better so it's kind of like an X2 on steroids basically um, just the X2 just done a little bit better, but as far as like the resolution and everything, the, the end product that you get, the video that you're creating looks the same on the X2 as it does the X3. And maybe, you know, you disagree with that. You can put that in the comment box below, but that's why I didn't upgrade because I'm just like, well, if it looks the same, I'm not going to go through the trouble of upgrading. I'll just keep my X2. And then once something better comes along, I'll upgrade then. And that's when I upgraded to this. Um, you're getting a solid upgrade in the video department. Solid upgrade on the screen. The overall user experience is, is better. You get the uh, you know the little plastic lens guards, which is a cool feature. Processor is better, so it's quicker, it's snappier, and it's got a, bolt, a, a boatload of other features that I you know I haven't even listed in this video. Like if it's too dark outside, the camera will tell you, hey, too dark, you shouldn't shoot in 8K, shoot in 5.7K, and then you can switch over and things like that that the X2 just doesn't do. Um, so yeah, overall, it's a better upgrade, better experience. If you have the X2, 
definitely recommend the X4, upgrade to that. Or if you're looking to get into the space, the X4 is a great camera, but the X2 is also a great camera too. So don't feel bad if you, you know, you want it, you can find this on the cheap. All right guys, so that's basically it. X2 over the X versus the X4. Which camera would you prefer? Do you have either of these cameras? If you have the X2, are you upgrading to the X4? Or are you just getting into the 360 space and deciding which camera to get? Um, let me know in the comment box below. If you guys like this video and you like this content, please uh, like, share, subscribe, all the stuff that you guys do, and I really appreciate it. Um, look out for future videos. I'm gonna be shooting more 360 content on the, um, the X4 specifically. Some stuff on time lapses, some tips and tricks on editing, stuff like that. So if you like those types of videos too, make sure you subscribe to the channel below. I swear, I will try to do my best to actually shoot, record, upload on a weekly basis. I've been struggling with this for quite a long time. If you're any, if you follow me at all, you know that that's true, and I apologize. So, um, so yeah, the guys, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.